little bit of a uh, blue package came in from kind of a well-known company called M2C Racing. So anyways, if you want to see what's inside, well, if you want to see like the installation of those M2C 17 millimeter uh, <laughs> up adapters, or actually I don't think it's an adapter, uh, it's more like, well yeah, it is kind of like a hub adapter. So anyways, if you want to see what's inside of this blue like package right here from RC Guy Garage, you already know what to do. I don't know, man. I've been on an Arma Big Rock V3 kick lately, and I'm telling you right now, this little truck, this little truck has been putting such a beat down on, yeah, the king of the hill, supposedly. Right now, this Arma Big Rock is technically king of the hill when you're talking tracks of Sex Max. So let's see what's inside of that bag. All right, so inside this bag should be a nice little goodie from M2C Racing. So, comes in a cellophane like little tiny shopping bag. And then there we go. Preview not supported. Why? Because it's in 4K? <laughs> but I need to see. Well, anyways, so here you go. M2C Racing. On the back right there, hopefully you can read that. It says adapters plus 5 millimeter for Arma 3S and 4S Big Rock Granite Sentin. So if you've got 3S and a 4S Big Rock Granite or Sentin, these are the adapters that you're going to want to get to get away from those funky 14 millimeter hexes. I'm not I'm not saying four millimeter like hexes in a bad way because those hexes were actually pretty cool. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna open up, I guess, more of a wider variety of tire choices. And like everybody knows, what tire choice do you think I'm gonna go with? Yeah. So anyways, there might be a little bit of overkill, but guess what? So we're gonna install this real quick and then we're gonna take it out for a rip. And we'll see what it does. Got a pretty good gauge of how that thing handles the back track. Temperature's about the same. It's actually a little bit warmer today. Hey Alexa, what's the temperature today? Right now, it's 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Tonight, expect a low of 20 degrees. 35 degrees Fahrenheit and a low of 20 tonight. So, we already know that the ground is frozen and the big rock literally handled it. It handled that ground so well. It also made me realize that there was a different type of trigger pressure that I need to have learning how that big rock like was. And now it's going to be an all new experience running those Red Cat Racing Kaijus. So yeah, let's just, uh, let's just check these things out. So inside the baggy little baggy here. Look at that. It's even, it's even heat wrapped. <laughs> it's got like individual little, uh, little bays. So here's obviously the nut that's going to take care of uh, the nut that was that was on there. So it gives you four of those nuts. Boy, are these things lightweight. We'll be thread locking these things on there. Size wise, seven millimeter box fits absolutely perfect. There's barely any wiggle room too, which is nice. We'll open up the next chamber. Look at that. Check that out. <laughs> oh, man. I'll tell you, man, that's some good stuff right there. Holy smokes. Now, not that anybody, like, really knows this, but that's literally, this is my first, this is my first piece of M2C racing, so... Looks like some pretty good stuff, man. So let's, um, let's open up the uh, other chamber, and then we'll break open into the big rock, and we'll get them squared away on the big rock. So here's something that I kind of like thought about, all right? Now, not everybody does this. I'm going to get out my gram scale. All right, so it's zeroed out, and this also has that um, special lock that's on the back side, which is uh, M2C 
uh, racing's design. So just the uh, just that lock nut itself comes in at 2.1 grams. And as a reference, we'll pull another one off. 2.1. So now we'll just weigh the um, the hub unit itself. Almost has like that dual uh, kind of look to it. So we'll weigh that piece. 6.9. Everybody knows that that's my combo of numbers. It's not funny. 6.9. Now we'll weigh one of these little um, adapter pieces that's actually going to lock onto the shaft. It's coming in at 0.9. We'll weigh another one. Point eight, let's see. Point eight, point nine. Measure another one. Point eight. So about that point eight, point nine. Probably like that in between. Um, and now as a whole, oh, it's got a ridge on it. So I'll put these pieces on as one unit. So a total of ten grams. Wow, look at that. Right on the nose, ten grams. So, they're literally like, I think they're like 10 bucks a piece, so maybe that's how he does it. <laughs> he basically like weighs the part, and that's how much you pay. So, uh, all together, 10 grams. So let's see if we get 40 grams as a total. And we got 39.0, close enough. Let's take it off real quick. Let it zero itself back out. Throw it all back on there and see what we get. 39.0. So, there you go. These scales are great. I love the fact that the thing said, it's like, well, it doesn't talk to you, but it goes, Hello! <laughs> so here's the invoice that comes with it. Obviously, you can see right there. M2C 3472 17mm hex adapter. Uh, plus five for Arma, 3S and 4S, Big Rock, Granite, Sentin, and then you can see the uh, total price right there, $40, so buck an ounce, and then, um, you know, shipping costs or whatever, $2 and then tax and whatever, whatever it is, total of 42 bucks and 84 cents. So obviously this is going to be an extremely easy install. Not for you, guy. <laughs> Basically just work in with all four wheels. And then go ahead and install one complete set as a unit. And then we'll work around all four corners. Very, very easy install. It's like one of the most basic of things uh, to go ahead and uh, install here. So go ahead and we'll crank this off which this is thread locked may pull that scale in just to measure the factory original part just to see where we are so and there's a set screw that's on that we learned that pretty quick <laughs> not really and you can see mine's loctited So just undo your set screw. And then go ahead and pull your wheel nut off. And you can see mine's got a little bit of uh got a little bit of uh grease on there. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe that off. So I do actually have I do have the hot racing um knuckle carrier uh, hubs or whatever you want to call them so we're going to go ahead and pull out the scale again real quick just to get a number not that this is really going to make a huge difference but the factory setup we're talking total between the nylock and the original 14 millimeter hex 3.3 grams and like what you saw, M2C, 
throwing on 10 grams. 9.9, .9, 10 grams, somewhere around there. 9.9, .9, 10, 10 grams, close enough. Alright. Again, like I said, <laughs> super easy install. So I'm going to take the uh, lug nut off for now. Make sure I rotate my axle just so that pin is straight. And basically it's just fitting on this onto here. Just like that. And then we'll go ahead and I'm going to put some thread lock inside this hole. Be a little too much, but we're all right. And I'm going to use a 17 millimeter wrench to go ahead and hold on to um, this portion of the actual hex. Boy, it actually had a had kind of like a nice feel onto it. It's almost like um, <laughs> it's almost like it was almost like it locked on. And because it is a 17, I'm going to go ahead and put the 17 mil on there. And then the 7, it's the 7 box on the end. Give it a nice crank. And that's it. So now what I'll do, I'm going to do the back side. Just so I can go ahead and get a um, kaiju tire and wheel setup on here. Jeez, these ones were loose because I didn't have to take off uh, those back ones. <sighs> Go ahead and get our next setup. Slide that right on over the pin. A little bit of a uh, thread lock on there so it's happy. You know what it was? It was um, hydraulic pressure. That's what that um, feeling was. Lock that bad boy on there. And then just obviously the way these nuts go on. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and get a uh, kaiju tire and wheel on there. So these are the kaiju tires and wheels that I'm always talking about right here so that's the part number for those it's a RER 12485 and it's a tire and wheel glued and basically that's what it is the only thing that I would recommend doing is I've done it in the past and I've showed how to do it I actually vent the lugs not the actual tire so I'll vent one of these holes and then you end up flipping it all the way on the opposite side you end up on one of these bars and you'll actually, you'll do the opposite side, meaning obviously I'm doing outside here, inside here. That way it just kind of like covers the moisture that gets in there. And then there's uh, two, two vent holes, one inside there, one inside there. You can go ahead and balance the wheel too, if that's something that you're into. Uh, depending upon the vehicle, sometimes I also balance. All right, so... The only thing that I might be unsure of concerning those kaijus, though, is that obviously the Big Rock has kind of like a um, special rim, meaning that the uh, backspace of the rim, there's a lot less backspacing uh, than there is on the kaijus. Could run into an issue. So let's get this uh, tire just shoved on there. Oh my god, look at that thing. <laughs> now, I shouldn't need uh, any thread lock when I'm installing these, but just because it's uh, it's by habit, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put just a little bit of thread lock right on the leading edge of the threads right here. Just a touch. And then when I put the wheel on, I'll make sure that I'm above the threads when I put it on. You can see it kind of like 
kind of like moves the uh, thread lock kind of on there. Go ahead and take the M2C nut. Throw that on there. Jeez, these tires might almost be too big. Oh, man. These things are massive. So we'll have to check out the um, turning radius on the uh, front there. I'm wondering if there's going to be a conflict. Give it a crank. Not too tight, but tight enough. And we'll move on to the front. We'll go ahead and we'll get a front one on there. I get a temp gun on this thing real quick. This thing was definitely hot. Yeah, look at that. That's why the GoPro shut off. 140-something degrees? Wow, that was recording in 4K. That's why. So watch out with your GoPros when you're, like, recording at 4K and you've got, like, the windsock on and when you shouldn't. So this windsock is kind of cool, but the other thing, too, is that when you're definitely recording at those higher frame rates, man, man, make sure it's, like, freezing cold outside when you use one of these windsocks and you're recording 4K on your like GoPro because this thing will turn into a pretty quick hand warmer. All right, good on that. Go ahead, I'm gonna just take the other one. Again, like I said, I don't think it's necessary to do with the uh, Sherlock, which I think that's what M2C calls it. I think they call it their Sherlock. And spin that bad boy onto there. Looks like there might be a body conflict. <laughs> might be a body conflict with the uh, Kaijus. But still, it'll open up a variety of tire options. Not maybe necessarily these ones. Boy, too bad I couldn't get the... Uh, I bet I couldn't get the Traxxas Max ones on there. Surprisingly, you gotta be kidding me. No way. Well, on full compression, <laughs> full compression, that definitely would be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a body conflict. <laughs> it's definitely a little bit of a conflict there. Oh man, it's so close, but as soon as that, as soon as it eats. Yeah, so I'd, I'd, I'd obviously have to limit steering if that was something I was going to do. Boy, look at the excessive, uh, look at the excessiveness in the steering that this thing has. Didn't notice that before. I wonder if that has something to do with the uh, hot racing. Jeez, I didn't notice that. Look at that. It actually buckles it. Huh. That's kind of funky. Yeah, so we'll go... These tires actually may be a little bit too big. So here's a look at the uh, Red Cat Racing Kaijus. They're definitely not going to work. And I kind of expected that. I actually didn't expect these M2Cs to come this fast. So, kind of a little bit unprepared. But like I said, I'm still going to rip this thing. I just had to like... I had to adjust my toe just a little bit uh, in the front. So, yeah. So we're going to take this thing out, and we're going to give it a quick little rip. So now you can see we obviously have the Red Cat Racing Kaiju sitting on the uh, Big Rock. Definitely changes the way it looks. Uh, tire's literally a little bit too big. And obviously the massive uh, change in the offsets is um, not necessarily a good thing. So I did have to adjust the uh, toe a little bit because I did say I was going to rip these tires anyway. I do want to see what it's like. I do suspect a couple of things. So right off, uh, because this has kind of like that soft start, um, uh, it's going to be a little bit, um, going to be a little bit of an issue. But maybe once it gets rolling, we'll see what happens. Got to watch out for motor temps, stuff like that. I'm not out to abuse it. I just, uh, I actually didn't expect, uh, I actually didn't expect them to seize, uh stuff to come this fast. Like, I don't know. I was thinking like, I think I had still like another week left, but 
They shipped it out pretty quick. They're only a couple of states away, so eh, whatever. We'll order up another set of tires and wheels to go ahead and get this big rock out there. But um, yeah, I am going to rip it right now. So if you want to see like what the non-proper tires and wheels will do to this thing, let's go check it out. Definitely gives this thing a little bit of uh, what they call ground clearance. So we'll take this thing out. Does it doesn't even slap? Oh, it still slaps. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> oh, for some reason I was thinking that it wasn't gonna uh, chassis slap, but I guess it still does. So definitely still have to be careful. Um, obviously on a full lock turn is when you can come into issues, but I'm hoping that as long as I can control like where I am, um, I'm thinking once I hit the jumps, I'm thinking it kind of be all right. And uh, we'll see. I don't know if this 3S system has what it takes, but we're going to rip it anyway. So let's just get out there. Now remember, this is not the right way to be running this truck. Here I am saying it's not the right way to run the truck. Yeah, so there's going to be obviously that cogging. On that throttle, jeez. You're right, you're not getting it, are you, guy? There's an issue. We got a little bit of electrical interference here. one of the M2C things? Yes, I did. Crap. Well, that's a negative. Right there. Make sure you let your wheel nuts. Crap. Yeah, if I find that, that would be a miracle. So, where could that have come off? You gotta be kidding me. Here's the pin. You gotta be kidding me. All right, so I found the pin, but the actual M2C little barrel nut 
is going to be the issue. So it probably was stuck in the wheel. I'm assuming when it popped off. Oh, and I ain't gonna find that. I can't believe I found the pin though. So it came to rest over here. Where'd the wheel come off though? The wheel came off over here somewhere. Ah, oh, there'd be no way. Nope. Nope. No way. Ah, man. Well, that was stinking short lived. Make sure you let your thread lock. Lock. Crap. That's amazing that the pin. Oh, I should have checked the wheel. Wherever the wheel came off, I should have just checked it. Son of a gun. I do have another barrel nut. It's not an M2C. So I'm gonna give it a search, see if I can find something here. Still can't believe I found that pin. You see, I can obviously laugh at it right now, but get ready for some full throttle action. Now this is the second time that this has happened. Something's going on with the radio. It's the second time that I've had massive interference to where the car took off like a rocket. There it goes, look. Do it still? And as soon as I turn off the radio, it's all set. So something is going on with this controller or something. I tell you, that can't be trusted, man. If this takes off again, you gotta shut off the remote. Huge amount of air control with those kaijus. Something is up with this remote, though. That's pretty sketchy. Watch, remote off, then it's all set. Something is ultra sketchy here. Something's going on, man. That should not be happening. Now, that was, that was literally a runaway. And something broke. No, but what I can say is something broken. I'm going to turn this radio back on again.
right. We've got some kind of radio interference here. Something is up in order to do that. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with the hexes. But oh my god, that has just got way too much power. Alright. I'm gonna shut this radio off. Just turn this on just for a second. Let's put the radio on. I can't trust that. I can't stinking trust that at all. It's making me think somebody's messing with me, man. In order for the receiver to do something like that, something's up. I've never had a vehicle do a runaway like that, um, unless it was a gas or a nitro. So I'm not gonna trust this truck right now. That is not cool. All right, GoPro off. So obviously something is up with this thing. Um, so right off, the only thing that I'm not liking about these M2Cs, let alone, let's not even talk about the, uh, let's not talk about the receiver issue, is obviously these nuts, they get loose pretty quick. So this one right here, um, let's see, which one is it? So this is mine. So that's not an M2C barrel nut. That's actually one of mine. Um, I think what I would have, get this thing off my head. Granted, like I said, I'm no, I'm no machinist. I'm no nothing. I'm just literally like, you know, what, what, you know, people call me. I'm a wrench. I'm, I'm an end user. Um, I obviously, I lost one of the barrel nuts. Probably should have waited for the, uh, thread lock to cure, but uh, that's, that's like debatable because I, I honestly want to say, I feel like those barrel nuts should be a little bit longer. And that's just my personal opinion. Uh, I'm going to pull one barrel uh, nut off right now and I'm going to compare the two and to show you like what kind of like my thoughts are um, versus the barrel nut that I have on it. The barrel nut that I have on there actually is slightly longer, but it's only slightly longer, I think, by, um, well, no, I should correct that. It's slightly too long. So what I had to do is I had to put a washer uh, to space it out after I put the 17 millimeter uh, wheel nut onto the wheel so that it could go. Man, that got my finger pretty good, man. So we just had a um, just had a massive some kind of issue with uh, my receiver here or something, some kind of radio interference. Now I have never ever had any kind of radio interference here whatsoever. Back when I was a kid, there was always the chance of getting radio interference, but. There's no one else running any RCs near me, so something's either seriously malfunctioned with my receiver or something. I don't know. Light bulb. You know, you know, I probably should check. I can see it in your eyes, guys. That's why I washed it. I should probably check and see if there's water in my receiver box. I'm telling you, man. What? That's something I didn't even think about. Could there be water in my receiver box? Let's check it out. Flash on. So I did pop the cover. This part of the cover, there's nothing. But inside, there is the slightest amount of wetness in there. So and that's probably enough to go ahead and cause an issue. See that in there? So there's just probably just enough moisture in there to have caused an issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, I'm actually not going to... Well, should I pop that out? I think what I should do is maybe I'll just take a heat gun and kind of dry it up, but most likely that's my issue. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with the fact that there's moisture in there. That definitely could be an issue with the electronics. And see, the issue was, was I 
should have checked that. I mean, I gave the thing a pretty good bath, what, yesterday? I think it was? I think I gave the thing a pretty good bath yesterday. I really should have thought about that um, receiver box. So if you do wash your vehicle like I did, unless you want to have like a massive runaway, especially on Kaiju flying saucers, be careful out there because I'm telling you, man, this little Arma Big Rock, that little motor on 3S. <laughs> That's got some power, man. That thing, that thing tried to take my fingers off. So, take my hat off, yeah. That thing literally tried to take my fingers off. And I should have thought, but I just wasn't thinking. And that's my fault. So, anyways, we did rip the uh, M2C hexes. We were able to put on the Red Cat Racing Kaiju tires and wheels. I did have to adjust the front toe just a little bit to fit such a massive tire, but surprisingly other than the soft start that this efc has surprisingly actually rips these tires like rips them like flying saucers i mean you saw it right <laughs> thought i was gonna end it you probably thought i was gonna too dumb move on my part number one not letting the um not letting that that uh thread lock dry that's a major thing um i do still want to take off the uh, hex here and, and see what's going on as far as uh, that's concerned. Uh, get a measure like why, well, just curious, why the barrel nut isn't as long as uh, the one that I put on. Um, obviously, the one that I put on, it's not the right way to do it, but it works. It's on there. It's basically hub-centric. Um... These are the ones that are on there. These are 8mm, and I get it. I understand why. I understand why. But uh, I think I might switch over to these ones just because it's a longer uh, threaded portion that sticks in there than that one right there. I mean, I, again, I do get it. That's a... Uh, what's that? So the ones that, I, the ones that I've got are... So the ones that I have... Oh, come on, focus on it. The ones that I have... <laughs> yeah, the ones that I have, they're an 8. Uh, what M2C uses is a 7. All right, so here's, here's my setup right there. Again, like I said, this one is washered away. This one is centric, so at least it looks centric. I don't know, maybe it's not. Um, yeah, so anyways, yeah, I don't know what to say. The kaijus actually work, but I just had to run away. So anyways... If you like episodes like this from RC Guy Garage, like I always say, just get out there and point blank. Just get out there and rip it. Just just do whatever. Just put a smile on your face. I still have a smile on my face. I was kind of concerned, though. I was concerned about that um, that receiver box. So, Or I was concerned about the fact that it was doing a runaway. I was really confused. And then all of a sudden, bing! Light bulb! Went off in my head and... Oh, yeah, I did wash it. So these uh, M2Cs, these are a... Uh... What a shame. <laughs> it was threadlocked. That that obviously is something... Um... Come on, guy. You got this. It is something that's... Uh... Spit it out, guy. Something that's that's kind of, I guess, you'd say uh, concerning. I mean, just, just to me. Like, just for the fact that it popped off... Uh, seemingly easy, but again, I'm no, I'm no designer. I'm literally just an end user. So the curiosity uh, in me is just wondering, like the um, the difference between the barrel nut that I have and the M2C. Wondering why the M2C one. I don't even have my pies. Disgusting here, guy. Uh, see what the uh, dimensions are on the M2C. And, yeah. So, the way that I had done that, I felt, was uh, was pretty good. Because, obviously, you can see what it did was that it um, the thread lock went, obviously, into the threads. But it also bubbled outside. So, it kind of, like, gave uh, a little bit of a grip on the outside to those M2C um, adapters. Uh, but I do want to pull this wheel off just to give it a quick check 
So it'll pull off now. It's thread locked on. <laughs> it is. It's literally thread locked on there. <laughs> so. Let's see. Can I do this right? So here's the barrel nut that I threw on. Uh, obviously the, the, the problem with mine versus uh, M2Cs is obviously M2Cs is... It's got a nice shoulder on it. There's a lot of things, obviously, that make sense about it. But I almost wish, like... I almost wish there was a way... So, I mean, I see why it's that... I see definitely see why it's that design. Because the taper goes right inside the threads, which is perfect. But... There's still enough room in there to be able to... To be able to get a bigger bite. And Mitch kept on saying something he didn't like, something about aluminum axles. But these, these axles are not, I don't understand. These axles are not aluminum. What is he talking about aluminum? Does he meant, was he talking about thinking that these were aluminum? Because this is steel. This, is, this, isn't, this isn't aluminum here. So, and then, um, but maybe I was like, maybe I was thinking the wrong thing. Because, see, a magnet won't stick to aluminum. See what I'm saying? So, I don't know. You can see that my uh, my barrel nuts are steel. The end piece is obviously too big. Um, but I almost feel like I wish there was some type of a... And it, it's probably too hard to do. I don't, I don't really know. But I almost wish there was some type of a... Um, some type of a lock nut or a serrade that was maybe on that because that's a nice fit. It's almost as if it's almost as if there was some type of uh you know those star washes? That might be that might be something that uh if you can find one that fits on there. But maybe that's also the issue. But who knows? Maybe maybe uh maybe M2C will put those little Sherlocks on these. So they don't back out. But then again, putting the thread lock on there, letting it cure, probably is the way to go. Um, it's really is the way to go. But I kind of, I wish. Well, maybe, let's see. I want to pop this on real quick. Just to see. Like, why is it, why is it like that length? Yeah, see? Alright, so that's... I can't, I'm not, I can't say that that's all... Is that all the way on? Yeah, so that's pretty much on. So you've still got... You've still got a good amount of, of distance right there that um, the barrel nut could actually be a little bit longer, which was what I was kind of trying to say. Like, obviously, mine, mine are longer, stepped out. You know what I mean? The one that I have on the back is basically washered, like, like basically like this. So that's why mine fit better in the back, that one that I lost, because it's washered out. But I feel as though I, I would I would have wanted that to just be a little bit longer because that's now see I don't have a tool to get inside of there. But what I do have though is I do have this. So let's see, does that go? Let's see how far that goes in. So that goes in that far. And that's actually all the way. What is stopping it from going on further? Hey, God. Hey, God. Hey, God. Hey, God.
You heard the voices talking to you. You should listen. You're getting really close, guy. Keep thinking about it. Remember, this is on camera. Yeah, see? Right about there. So it's got about that. There's a little black line right there. Well, I guess never mind. I guess I don't know why that... That's kind of funky. Maybe it's in the hex? You know what they call that? They call that one of those light bulb moments. Maybe it's just the... Where the hex comes into play? I wonder. I wonder if the depth... That's what it might be. Yeah. Alright. So I'm just doing this literally off the cuff, so... Normally I would, like, research things a little bit better than what I'm doing right now. Center that pin. I gotta take the wheel off. This is the next morning, by the way. So obviously that's on there. Yeah, that's it. That's the reason why. See how far? So it's not biting the threads like I had kind of thought. See how far in there it is? Put the flash on. It's not going to focus, is it? Focus. Yeah. I think it's two. Yeah, so it's it's really it's really deep in there, so we're not it's not biting enough. That is the issue. Alright, so for me, this is what I was trying to say. So mine is washered, right? And when you think about focus. When you think about how this is let's focus get down. When you think about how my barrel nut is on there, okay, I'm washered away. So I'm literally going to the space out of the hex. I'm biting all of the threads where this one just had to hit record again. So I'm biting all of the threads effectively um, with my piece versus the M2C. The M2C is literally only biting like a couple of threads. See what I'm saying? When you look inside that hole right there, like, here's a good close-up. So, you can see how far in the axle is. And then, here's the M2C piece. And when you line it up, because it's shouldered, it might step in. It might step in. Yeah, actually, it looks like it might step in a little bit. But still, it's it's not enough. It's really not enough to bite because you still got basically... You still got basically, like, this whole surface area right there that mine... Basically grab all the threads. Or close to it. So, again. Yeah, I don't know. Again, this is just personal opinion. Uh, M2C does make awesome stuff, but sometimes, you know, I don't know, man. I'm just a mechanic. You know what I mean? And, and I don't mean like a master tech mechanic. I mean like from when I was like... Five years old, I had wrenches, screwdrivers, hammers in my hand, and that's literally, I may work with my hands kind of guy, so I do, I do wish that M2C's barrel nuts were a little bit longer because, yeah, I do wish they were longer because here's technically, like, the bite, well, I can't see it. here's technically the bite that M2C is getting versus what I've got, so... Like I said, I don't know why I'm not I'm not a designer. I'm not an architect. 
I'm literally just an end user. So anyways, hopefully you like this episode from RC Guy Garage. Uh, basically, it was just installing the M2C 17mm hex adapters. Um, it needs a longer barrel nut, in my opinion. I mean, yes, putting thread lock on there probably could have helped, but having longer set of threads to, like, dive into that thing definitely would have helped a lot, like, more. So, I'm out. You should get out, too. Well, I mean, I'm not out right now. It's only, like, 6 o'clock in the morning. But <laughs> I'm usually out uh, trying to do stuff and trying to, like, you know, have a blast. The whole point is to have a smile on your face. So, and uh, the kaiju tires actually do rip. Just know that you're going to get a body conflict, like, when the things turn into flying saucers. So, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still happy. I've still got a smile on my face, and that's all that matters. So, just get out there and rip it. So, I mean, granted, this is just my own personal opinion on this. Uh, just for these hexes, it appears as though the 5mm plus 5 part of the hex is where the issue just lied for me. Because, obviously, that makes this uh, barrel nut basically too short, in a sense, when you're looking at this. So, effectively, what I'm saying is just, in my opinion, because this backside is that 5 plus 5, or however this was done. I don't know. I don't know how it was done. It just seems as though whatever this plus 5 is, or whatever the, the length is, is basically what uh, this barrel nut is kind of like missing. So when you line it up, it, it's pretty close. Again, I'm not a machine shop, so who knows. So anyways, this is, again, it's just my opinion, but I think I would like to have seen a little bit more, because um, that's, like, literally, that's, I mean, it pushed the axle in. See, that's what I can't, can't do it with one hand. I know what I'm talking about, and you know what I'm talking about, too. <laughs>